welcome to US City 360. I'm Dilbar Shatterson, and today we're moving forward from Brooklyn, New York at PS217, where we're commemorating the victims and celebrating the survivors of last year's Hurricane Sandy. Many of the people affected, like many of the people in the audience today, were unaware of Tsiji and its relief programs. And that's where community organizations, like Copo, who is co-hosting today's event, and community outreach associates have come in to bridge that gap. And by the amount of people that you'll see here today, you'll see just how successful those partnerships have been. And while not every care recipient has been able to attend today's event, let's go take a look and meet a couple from Far Rockaway in Queens who have been touched by Sandy, but also have been just touched by Tsiji. A lot happened after Sandy, a lot. I think some people lost their life and all. So I look at life now, presently, and totally different. I'm not afraid of the flood. It can't do me anything anymore. It's done, it's done. Wow, look at this. Wow. Yes. It's still messy. Big mess. Big mess. Big mess, huh? Yes. Yeah. This is our place. This is where we live. My husband, being stressed out, totally stressed out, and having to have heart surgery, He's not working, he's totally unemployed. I'm the only person that's working on a part-time job. And we can't afford to pay anybody to completely fix this. Four feet of water from the floor, that's what, um, it hurts because nobody really came to help us over here. And I'm sure if you went to 10 houses who went through Sandy, none of them is complete because none of them got their money. None, none, none. It's complete. This was actually all the way here. She is the victim of Sandy and her basement is totally destroyed. But during that time, she still cooked for her neighbors with the only grill she has. Because I, I love to cook, I love to share, I love food, I love to see people eat. It's something nice to share. It feels good when you share. After Sandy, they got the helper from uh, so And then she's... they came by. They, they were nice to me in the months that I was really down. They gave me some vouchers. And I was able to, I only buy food. I gave my neighbor some stuff. I gave another lady some stuff from whatever I bought. So I even shared the money that they gave me with other people. We married for 37 years now. And ever since, she always liked that. Both of us will be walking, going down the street, and somebody in pain or somebody fell on the street, and she will forget me and attend to that person. If she had to take that person to the doctor, she will carry it and pay for that person too, and left me there. That's why I used to get mad. But now, when I see life, that what I go through, now I feel sorry now. So I'm going to do the same thing. Jacqueline's a home. Jacqueline is a good cook. She's willing to join us as a volunteer. Yeah. Hide up here. Oh, wow. And I'm going to make some curry. I'm ready. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know what it is about, what it's for. You have a new job. It's a new job. You see, it has different type of people in this world. It has good people, nice people, bad people, people who go out of their way to help other people. And I understand this is the place for it. That's why I come here. I have a day off. I chose to come and volunteer and make a meal for someone else. And I like to make other people happy. Oh, this is uh, magnificent. That's my way of appreciation. Definitely going to come back again. So we will come back. I'll be back. Individuals like Jacqueline show the success of Tsiji's mission of charity. And the fact that there are over 600 people here in attendance today at PS217 proves that same point. I'm now joined by Imam Mohammed Aslam of the Mustafa Center in Brooklyn, New York, who is here to receive a care package from Siji. So welcome, Imam. Thank you for being with us. I understand that you are a Sandy victim yourself. And so as a spiritual leader, what does it mean to you to see all these people gathered here today for this event? What can you say about people's spiritual needs since Sandy? And what kind of benefits can an event like this have for people like them? 
सेंडिंग के जो है किसी को किसी चीज़ की जरूरत है कोई किसी तरह से डूबा हुआ है किसी तरह उनकी हेल्प करने के लिए बहुत अच्छा है ये लोग आपस में जो है मिलाव करके उनकी हेल्प कर रहे हैं बहुत अच्छा है ये बहुत अच्छी चीज़ है अल्लाह का फरमान है कि लोगों की हेल्प करना इंसानों की हेल्प करना उसको खाना खिलाना भूखे को गरीब को जो उसकी ज़रूरत के मुताबिक काम करना उसका साथ उनके साथ हेल्प करनी ये बहुत अच्छी बात है ये मुझे बहुत पसंद है एज अ पर्सन ऑफ मुस्लिम फेथ वट्स इट लाइक फॉर यू टू रिसीव सो मच हेल्प टाइम आफ्टर टाइम बिकॉज आई अंडरस्टैंड यू ऑल्सो रिसीव हेल्प फ्राम दिजी फाउंडेशन बिफोर टूडे वट्स इट लाइक टू रिसीव दैट काइंड ऑफ हेल्प फ्राम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इससे जो है लोग इकट्ठे होते हैं और वो लोगों को अच्छा मौका मिलता है एक दूसरे की हेल्प करने के लिए ये बहुत अच्छी चीज़ है जब अल्लाह इसको पसंद करता है एक दूसरी कंट्री का या मजहब का कोई इसमें नहीं है कोई भी किसी भी रीज़न का हो वो अल्लाह के बंदे हैं सब पीपल हैं इसलिए सब कोई मदद करना ये बहुत अच्छा लगा है इसको किधर का भी कोई हो कोई पाकिस्तानी हो कोई इंडिया का हो कोई किस रीजन से तलक रखता है लेकिन हेल्प करनी एक दूसरे की बहुत अच्छी बात है Thank you very much Imam. Now let's go take a look at Ana Ramirez who's another Sandy survivor who's going to share her story with us now. Y en nombre de todas estas personas yo les agradezco mucho a Sushi Foundation y a todas las demás organizaciones porque nos están ayudando sin saber quiénes somos y preguntarnos de documentos sin saber de dónde somos. Nosotros tampoco sabemos de dónde son ellos, pero aún así ellos nos están ayudando. Yo les agradezco en nombre de todos ustedes a ellos. Les agradezco mucho y que Dios los bendiga. Y le agradezco mucho a la Master Chen Yen, que es la que ha hecho posible que todas estas personas, sin saber quiénes somos nosotros, vinieron a ayudarnos, a tendernos una mano y a abrazarnos cuando nos necesitábamos. Les agradezco mucho. Candy. No, nosotros estamos ahora preparando los Candy. Estos eh, primero tenemos que alistar el azúcar, echarle diferente color, sabor. Eh, normalmente saco. Llevo los 80 o 100. Si el, el día está bueno, lo logro vender todo. Si el día es muy bueno. Y si no, bueno, me vendo mis 60, 65. Así diferente día, cada día es diferente, no hay un día. I take na, the train now, and then I go to Manhattan. Uh, I wait for the, when the child coming out of the school and selling my cotton candy. Cat candy, candy, cat candy, cat candy. What color you want? Um, I think it's pink. Blue one, please. One blue? Yes, okay. thank you very much. Uh, people coming and buying. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I live here in Coney Island, and I have a five kids. Hello! Hola! ¿Cómo estás? How are you? I stay here inside when the, when the storm comes, and I don't have time to take uh, something like a clothes, shirt, or something, or my papers. And I lost everything I have to do, everything again. I'm pregnant at him. He hit me. Oh, uh, I'm going to hospital five times. This is a follow-up visit. Mm -hmm. We just visited her two weeks ago and gave her financial aid, but we came to follow up to see how she's doing. Basically, if they call us and they say they're having some kind of trouble, we assist in whatever she needs. Yeah. That's a blessing for me because the day when the people come and give it to me a car, the same day I go buy for, for my kids and for me. OK, I'm going now. I'll see you in the church, OK? I have to go help my church now. Eight years ago, when I bring here my kids and I don't have food, 
and I don't have money because I don't have apartment. One day I'm going to church and find my pastor. So she told me, you know, I'll help you. Oh. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello. I had found out about the abusive relationships that she had had as a child. She hugged me so tight and so strong, and she just kept saying, you're my mama. That was the day that I received her into my family. I would do anything I could for her and her children. Before the Sunday, I'm going to pick out cans and bottles on the beach. My husband, he's selling cotton candies. For me, the material is not so much important, but like my kids. You know, I say thanks God because my kids stay with me. It's a lot of people lost family. I was just blessed to have some pieces of the green thumb. Anna came and told me that she really wanted to do that. So I gave her my pieces. And the green tomatoes, that says Mexican tomatoes. No, I make sauce for this. <laughs> and I have my garden, my tomatoes, my hot pepper, my green peppers. You know, that's helpful for me too because I, I don't go in the store for buy. She has a three-year-old that's autistic and a 17-year-old who is mentally handicapped girl. She has carried all this on her back even before Sandy. It's a lot of special kids stand in the church, don't move. My kids walk, have hands, good eyes. Well, my two special kids is good. <laughs> so I said, you know, God, thank you because it's no, it's no bad. <laughs> she is the strength of this family. She's an inspiration to all people who have had tragedies with uh, hurricanes or any kind of emotional tragedy that's trying to survive and come back. She is a, a, a role model. Stories from people like Ana Ramirez are stories that we try to feature here often at 360 to show you what happened to people affected by Hurricane Sandy. And now we're in Staten Island here at the Light the Shore event with Karen Jackson, who is part of the long-term recovery organization here in Staten Island. So Karen, what can you tell me about the walk that's going to happen today? So there's several purposes to us walking. First, it is to allow people to come to a communal space where they can express their grief and their memories as to what happened here a year ago. It's also a way of celebrating how much our community has come together. It's a way to see familiar faces of volunteers and loved ones and caregivers who have uh, kind of helped us throughout the past year. Um, and it's also to raise attention to the fact that we still need a lot of help on Staten Island. The, the long-term part of our recovery has just begun. It will take many years for a lot of people to feel a sense of normalcy again. My heart is just warmed by the different kinds of people who are working together. So just the unity that I've experienced in the course of this recovery effort has been truly astounding. Well, thank you very much. Thank and good you. luck with the, the recovery efforts. I appreciate it. So let's take a look at some of the other things that are happening for Light the Shore. Now I'm joined by George Chang, Executive Director of the Northeast Regional Office here at SIGI. And he's here to tell me a little bit about the Bodhi tree that's here for Light the Shore. So George, what can you tell me about the tree and why, what is the significance? Uh, we have a broadly a Bodhi tree, uh, especially it got a special meaning, uh, especially for you know in this neighborhood they have been hit severely by uh, Hurricane Sandy last year. After one year later, we came here. Uh, we we think we can grow a piece to land. We offer to them a Bodhi leaf and they are going to write down uh, their wishes and also what they've been uh, struggling and what they've been through, you know, uh, for the past year. And uh, hopefully they can use this leaf uh, to wish a bright life and also bring uh, peace inside their heart. 
Um, uh, the other meaning is actually Puti means uh, a hope. So thank you very much and good luck with the Bodhi leaves and also with staying warm tonight. My pleasure, thank you. And so let's go take a look and meet one of the leaders tonight who will be leading tonight's interfaith prayer. And now I'm joined by Reverend Susan Carlson, who's a disaster response coordinator here in the metro area. And she's going to be leading one of the services today. So Reverend Carlson, uh, what can you tell me about people's spiritual needs since Sandy? And how can an event like this benefit them? People in the aftermath of Sandy were just um, crestfallen. Their lives were shattered. Um, we lost 24 lives here and people losing thousands and thousands of homes. So the disaster was humongous here. It was huge. An event like this brings us together in the one year anniversary after Sandy. It's a chance for us to all come together and know that we are one in spite of all our differences. So speaking of the differences, there are a number of different uh, leaders from different faiths here. What can you tell me about the collaboration between these different faiths in an event like this? There is an openness in this community to those kind of gatherings that has increased over the decades. Um, Staten Island wasn't always like that. Sometimes they were known as being very provincial and very closed. But now there's more of an open spirit in it when we're having an event like this. We just know we need to do it with our interfaith partners and all people from all faiths. So thank you very much, Reverend, and good luck in your ministry. Thank you. Thank you. And so let's go take a look at one of today's event participants, Guy on Rescue, who's led by Derek Tobacco, to see what his story was like during Sandy. Okay, what time uh, will you be home today? At like 3 o'clock. Is that, is that good for me to come over? Yes, I'm right down the street from you guys. Yes, 517, right? I believe Staten Island is the forgotten borough. It hasn't even been a year yet, and I feel like the media attention has dropped off. The volunteers, the donations, everything has dropped off. And everybody does assume that New Yorkers are so resilient that, hey, they're just New Yorkers. They'll just take care of it. This is Derek from Guy and Rescue. Okay. Okay. Five o'clock is good. Okay. So it's true. We are very resilient. We need help. There's so many intake forms of so many people that need help. And, and you heard that last lady. She said her house is the same. She did mold remediation, but no, it not, not no insulation, no sheetrock. And if, if she doesn't call me, and it would still stay like that. My name is Derek Tobacco, and I started Guy and Rescue in the days immediately following Hurricane Sandy. We decided to uh, drive around Staten Island to the really affected areas after um, my mom and my brother's house were wrecked by the storm and uh, see who needed some support and, and which communities we could help out. My name is Eleni Stavrakos and I was hit by Hurricane Sandy. It came in as a tsunami. It popped open my garage door. It indented it and popped it open and the water washed through and it had about seven feet of water. Insulate, sheetrock. That's, it. That's all I'm doing. I tape need to paper, insulate right? and yeah. sheetrock, I guess, tape it because the winter's coming and paint it and that that's it so far that's good enough i'm gonna measure for sheetrock right now to see uh how many boards of sheetrock we're gonna need for this wall we need 40 by four because i ran out of money otherwise i would have paid someone to fix it but I, they do want a lot of money so um not 25 by four to come up um, with it right now so it's approximately nine by eight this wall uh, there are so many, there are thousands of homes still, homeowners that are displaced. There are so many challenges going on right now with homeowners. And now um, most of the mucking out is completed on Staten Island because it's 10 months later and we are in the rebuild phase. Right after the storm hits, when you go in and you rip up the wet carpeting and sheetrock and all that stuff and pull it out, we've mucked out over 600 homes on Staten Island Guy and Rescue. And now we've rebuilt 175, about 175 to 200 homes we've rebuilt. Long way to go. You know, uh, FEMA tells us that the long-term recovery is going to take between five and seven years, and we're only coming upon one year right now, so. 
We need to get a lot more people back into their homes. There was 22,000 homes on Staten Island affected by the storm, and there's still thousands of people that are not back in their homes. So this is actually my mom's house, and she has a beautiful piece of property here on the water in Staten Island, but the sea was very angry on October 29th. And all of the water went right into the basement. We had about eight feet of water with about two or three feet of, of sand in the entire basement. So, you know, at the beginning, she was telling me that charity starts at home. Gonna have to get mom a new one. And I was saying, and I explained to her the situation, and she understood. My mom is, you know, very involved in community service, so she was breaking my chops a little bit, but she understood that there were people much worse off than her. We knew that there were a lot of people that were a lot worse than we were, because at least we were able to live in our house after we took care of what we had to do it and after the first month or so. But we also knew that Derek was helping people who were not even back in their houses yet, and it was over six months, and they're the people who needed it the most. Very close to the one-year anniversary, I figured I'd be a good son and, and do my best to bring some volunteers over here and get Mom back home. I feel great helping people get, a, you know, get their homes back and their families and establish something for themselves. I don't really go to the gym and you know, I don't really work out and stuff, so this is kind of, you know. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful to see somebody try to, you know, get their life back together, start to put things back in place, you know, start to move in. So you know, that's, that's the good part of it all, you know. Finish work. <laughs> Guy and Rescue was not in my life plan. Last year at this time, I was going to Vegas, going to Miami, traveling, working. Uh, I have a full-time job, uh, and uh, I work in the securities finance industry. I do um, uh, financial tech, I work for a financial technology company. Since the storm hit, I don't go to, to the office that much. Um, I do a lot of my day job from here. Uh, I feel like it's my duty as a Staten Islander to help rebuild Staten Island. I'm extremely proud of him. You know, Derek has done a lot of things uh, over the years, and he he's the kind of person that becomes not just interested in something when he really believes in it. He totally immerses himself 1,000%. I have no personal life anymore. I'm just, just a volunteer these days. That I've had a personal life for the last 42 years, I think I could take one year off. And now let's go to our city volunteers who will help us light the shore. With every candle we light tonight, we commemorate the victims and celebrate the survivors of Hurricane Sandy. And with resolve, never lose hope and never lose courage. I'm Vidvar Shatterson. I'm from Staten Island, New York. Let's move forward.